What's going on, pop culture fans? This is your boy Jay Ru and Kung Fu, and welcome to another episode of the Radioactive Pop Culture Podcast. Uh, it's the holiday season. That's I, right, baby. Are it's you the, in the spirit? I'm in the spirit. I got the spirit. I got the Holy Ghost spirit. Amen. Amen. And Dirty said he needs uh, to give me my money. That's right. <laughs> hey, Dirty, baby, I got your money. <laughs> We digress. Uh, anyways, yeah, we got a nice show for you guys today. We're going to talk a little bit about the Christmas uh, special. The Christmas, we go, yeah, the Christmas special. This is, this is our Christmas special. The Holy Spirit Christmas special. That's right. That sounds like a, a, a team in the NCAA final, like basketball tournament. Oh lord! It comes out of nowhere. It's like it's got thirty-seven names to this university. It's like the Holy Spirit movie Christmas special, Southern Cross, the Baptist, <laughs> Canaanites, Egyptians. Oh. Ju- of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ, of, in the Latter Day Saints, uh, of Latter Day New Mexico Saints on the mountaintop of the Virgin Mary University of South Carolina. Go Cats! Go Cats! <laughs> Go Cats! <laughs> uh, but anyways, again, we digress. But uh, uh, yeah, we got a Christmas special show for you guys. Um, kind of a short show. Uh, we may, we may ramble and may it may uh, kind of progress on, but uh, we're going to talk about our top three favorite Christmas movies of all time. I think our number ones might be the same, uh, but hell, our number twos and threes might be the same. Uh, I don't know. We're kind of going into this both blind. Uh, and then we'll talk about some Christmas specials that we've seen recently that uh, you know we've both enjoyed. And then we're going to end it on a high note for us adults that like to buy toys. That's right. All right. Well, let's, let's get it started. Um, all right, man. Well, top three. Uh, film. So let's go in reverse order. Start with number three, of then course. two, and then one. And uh, you do the honor, sir. Starting at number three. Okay, so let me see here. Uh, I got my one, got my two, got my two, Th- three. Out. Movie or, or Christmas special? Uh, let's do, let's stick with movies. Stick with movies. Movies? Like it's a movie you put on every Christmas. Like your number three movie. Uh,. You know, I, I guess in honor of my wife, this is her favorite. Okay, okay. This is movie, so okay. I guess. It's a wise man, wise man. So I would guess I put some my three. It's Elf. Elf. Okay. Elf. Um, so we went to New York for um, work. Uh, early, it was early this year, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, a good friend of mine. That lives in, uh, in Queens, uh, New York. He took us on sightseeing, a couple locations around town, whatever. So he took us to the actual bridge of the snowball fight from Elf. Oh, nice. In Central Park. Yes, in okay. Central Park. Yeah. So I actually have a picture um, that I took of my wife pretty much posing with like, just a snowball, or whatever, right, right close to the actual bridge and that kind of deal. So, you know, that was sort of like a little yeah. moment. An elf lore and that kind of deal. So, <laughs> well, you know what's funny is like when we were in New York, um, we went to the. Uh, what does this? What does this taste like? A pretty crappy cup of coffee? Uh uh-uh, uh, the world's greatest cup of coffee. We went to that little oh, okay. that little shop that was there. Uh, obviously, it's you know it looks a little bit different now, but uh, but but that was a spot which was pretty cool. But uh, okay, okay, elf, okay. So elf, so yeah. Uh, number two. A Christmas story Ooh. slash a Christmas story Christmas. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm I I'm that person that could watch a Christmas story when it comes on TV straight like for the whole 24 hours because if you guys know I think on TBS or mm-hmm. TNT TBS th- they show 24 hours of a Christmas story. Christmas Day. Yeah, Christmas Day. I've done it before. I've actually hours and just sit there and watch the same movie all completely like just cause I love that movie. I love Christmas Story and you know a Christmas Story Christmas is on HBO Max now. I'm loving it just as much. Uh, you know, for it, it takes you back to you know of Ralphie and, and that kind of deal. Mm-hmm. It's very nostalgia uh, for me at least. But I love Christmas Story. That's, you know, the whole I shoot your eye out and and mm-hmm. and just the damn dogs and just everything Not about the Bumpus' about hounds. The Bumpus hounds. Like this <laughs> all of it because as a kid I could kind of relate to it because mm-hmm. of like the antics of like seeing your parents 
dealing with Christmas and you hanging out with your friends and, and like not dealing with bullies but dealing with people that you just didn't get along with mm -hmm. from like especially being in a neighborhood whatever it's like a pick on you that kind of deal yeah. like just it, it just you know brings back good old memories kind of deal yeah, so <laughs> but yeah so that part I did also too now as an adult you know watching that movie makes me think about I wonder what happened to that little kid that little bastard uh, 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 back when I was a kid like, you just wonder you start thinking about hold on what happened to that kid? Uh, what happened to him? It, it gets you uh, to reminisce about mm -hmm. other people in your past and that kind of deal. You know, now with my friends, you know, that uh, I grew up with, we talk every once in a while and that kind of deal. So, you know, we kind of just talk about stories of, of us doing, doing Christmas Day or Christmas week, you know, not having no school and just being out in the middle of the neighborhood just doing dumb stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just, just doing dumb shit. And, you know, hey, we were, building ramps and jumping your bikes yeah, off we're, we're, yeah we're gen x one thing i learned about gen x our parents don't give a shit what happened to us as long as we was home on time it's all it's all they care about as long as they get a phone call about the shit we doing wrong they didn't get damn where we went on our bikes they didn't care what was going on as long as we didn't get in trouble and your, no phone call happens your ass had to be home by the yeah. street light came on oh, yes that's, that's all that matters we could be doing some crazy shit ever that our parents would never knew about and you know just funny Talking to friends that I grew up with by then. So, same thing Christmas story. You know, in a Christmas story, Christmas. Reminiscing, talk, talking about the crap they did, and having fun, you know, just, you know, good times. You know? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Good times. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's save your number one. Of course. I have a feeling that we have the same number one. Of course, one. of course. I think okay. we do too. All right, so uh, my number three uh, Christmas movie of all time is uh, actually, shout out to my wife. It's one of her. Favorite Christmas movies of all time. Probably her favorite Christmas movie of all Nightmare time. Nightmare Before Christmas? Nope. Okay. Close. Well, I, I consider The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie more okay. so than I do a Christmas movie. Okay. Um, but it swings both ways, obviously. Yeah. It's a Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, but anyways, but my number three is um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey version. Oh, Yes. Uh, to me, is a classic. First of all, it's classic Jim Carrey. It's a timeless, you know. You know, I remember being a kid watching The Grinch on, you know, on TV. You know, the cartoon version. Yes. And then the next day was Rudolph, and then the next day was, uh, you know, the, the Year Without Santa, and then it was Santa Claus is coming. You know, it was all these nostalgias uh, of watching stuff on TV that are like, you know, it's funny because on the way up here, Santa mm -hmm. Claus was coming to town was on TV, right? Really? And I'm thinking to myself, I was like, oh man, this, and we're kind of watching it for a little bit, but then I was thinking to myself, who's watching this right now? <laughs> because I, I guarantee it, there's a lot yeah. of people that are not watching it. Yeah. Because either A, their parents didn't watch it. True. Right? And so therefore their kids are not watching it. And to me, it's just like a, it, it's almost like a Christmas sin to like not watch these movies. Well, actually, what's funny, I think, I think this is the first year in a very long time that um, Tony Brown Christmas is not being shown on TV. Oh, yeah, that's true. Which is well, crazy. I think, and I think a lot of that has to do with Apple, with them owning the rights to Charlie Brown, I think. Yeah, but, but still, it's like, yeah. come on now. It, yeah, if you're going to show the Thanksgiving, yes. why not show the Christmas one, The Christmas, right? come exactly. on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, it's a, it's a great story. The visuals, I mean, I'll never forget, like, that one close-up scene of Jim Carrey where he smiles and you see all the wrinkles in his yeah. face, like the cartoon. You know, it's yeah, it's a that's my number three. Number two, I was really kind of struggling about this, okay. about what my number two was going to be because I was also thinking Elf. Okay. Okay. But uh, Elf is actually probably like five or six for me. Okay. Okay. But my number two is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh shit, dude! I can I, that movie could be five minutes to the end, and I will still watch it. That's funny. And it's it. Uh, we watch it every year. Um, there was actually at one point, I think maybe a couple years ago, uh, uh, friends of ours they had a Christmas party, mm -hmm. and the theme was to dress up like characters from the movie. That's awesome. So, <laughs> and <laughs> so my buddy, him and his wife, they dressed up like Julia Louis Dreyfus's character. Uh -huh. You know when they went to go work out, and they're like in those sweatsuits. 
like oh, yeah. the act, like the sauna suits, like the silver reflective, and dude, it was hilarious. That's, that's funny. So yeah, so yeah, there was a lot of cousin Eddies, and uh, <laughs> there course. was one, there was one couple that was that uh, that dressed up like um, Marge and uh, the old uncle with the the stogie and his his <laughs> wig comes off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, but Christmas, uh, yeah, the, I can watch that. It's a it's a great movie. It's classic to me, classic comedy, like slapstick comedy on t- that you would watch in a movie. Um, and what's funny that you say that is because, so in that movie, you know, we all know, uh, uh, was it uh, what's her name, Beverly D'Angelo? Mm-hmm. She plays, uh, oh my god, the wife. The wife. What's that? No, that's Clark. What's the wife's name? Oh my oh, god. Oh my god. Now I'm drawing a blank. It's Russ. It's the son, Clark, uh, Beverly. Be- yep. No. E- Evelyn. Evelyn. Shit. Yeah. So I, I can't we know, we, you guys know who we're talking yeah. about. So, her, Beverly D'Angelo. So, a couple weeks ago, I saw Violet Knight. She's in Violet Knight. Is she really? Yes. Okay. So, in Violet Knight, she plays like the matriarch of this family. If you see commercials, uh, of an older lady, and you see John Guzamo bring to a house. That's her house. She, she's, uh, you know, she, he's rob. Uh, John Guzamo and his crew is robbing her for all her riches and all her shit that she, that she has in her house, and that kind of deal. And, oh, okay. And, oh, you could tell she's done, she had work done. You, yeah. You, you can kind of see it. She mm. had some work done. Like, mm. like, because I swear when I saw him, like, who is playing that part? It wasn't the after the movie, after like the research. That I was like, this can't be her, and it was her. I was like, oh my god, either she didn't age well or she had work done yeah. to her face, or like, yeah, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, I knew she looked familiar. I just couldn't, I, cause, it, cause you also know about her voice. Her, she has that kind of raspy voice. Yeah, when you, you like. Who is that? Who's playing that part until I we said it was her? But yeah, she's a, she's the mom in Violent uh, Night, nice. which is a hilarious movie, people. I promise you, Violent Night is hilarious. Here's the best way I could explain it. It's pretty much Bad Santa mixed with Home Alone 2 with... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Hold on. How did I say it? Uh, okay. It's Bad Santa mixed with Die Hard Part 2 mm. sprinkled with Home Alone, the first one. Her name was Ellen. Ellen, okay. Ellen, okay. Yeah. So yes, that's Violent Night. Take all the good parts of Bad Santa, all the good parts of Die Hard Part 2, put it together, mix in the bowl, and sprinkle Home Alone on it. That shit was hilarious. I promise you, all the good parts. Okay. So yes. Well, I think we're going to go see it this week, so I'll definitely... I'll, I'll... I'll see if I, f- I feel the same way. But, I mean, going back to uh, Christmas Vacation, just, like, I remember, it's like, I remember my dad showing me that movie. Really? Like, when I was little, you know? And and us watching it and, like, laughing. And so I think that's why, I kind of, like, I really like that movie because, like, I always reminisce with, about, like, me and dad watching it. Okay. And then, like, a couple of years later, it'd be, like, me and dad, and then mom got in the mix, and then it's, like, <laughs> Now we watch it every year. Um, there's sometimes I'll just put it on just randomly because it's it's a funny movie. It's hilarious. Oh, that shit is hilarious, especially when Clark just goes off on the whole family. <laughs> that, that shit just that shit. He just goes off on the ass. He, he's like, okay, we're all crazy. I'm crazy. Like, Holy like, shit! Where's the Tylenol? <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, that's, that's funny. It's funny, dude. The part where the fucking squirrel comes out of the tree. Oh my God! To the the what he goes if this if this turkey smells as good as or tastes as good as it smells, oh man! And she's all excited, you know. And then he cuts the fucking turkey. Delicious. <laughs> ah, dried as oh my God! And then they're all. <laughs> oh, did you see it? Um, Raising Cane's uh-huh. has the yeah. the puppies. Yes, it's, it's Clark, Clark, Eddie, Eddie, yeah, and then the the grandpa or no, not the the uncle. His yes, uncle. yeah. Eight time I go there, they sold out. Yeah, I've been there so many times. Just some damn uh, puppies, they sold out. They uh, canes off of Lake Line. 
they have Clark in stock. Well, the, the girl told me uh, I'm at an order. She said, she said, you order more line. Oh, okay. So I'm oh, at an order more line. The, uh, Man, the you Asher. can do that. Kings got it like that. I the guess. Kings is fucking good though. Fuck yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, uh, but um, and also to go back on, on your third one, the Grinch. You know, I'm a, I love all three of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The like, new one. The like, new one's like, good with like, Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh bro, that shit. Yeah. That's just all three to me are they're diff same story, but they're all different in their own little way. You know, yeah. you have the the animated version, the cartoon that I grew up on just as much as he did. Like I love that version. Mm -hmm. The Jim Carrey's amazing. You know, the costumes, just the whole thing. And the Benedict Cumberbatch version, that shit is, is, is that was just funny to me. That was hilarious. It, all of them are just it's, it, they're all the same story, but they're all just yeah. different. And I, you know what's funny is now that I think about now that I'm thinking about it, you just when you said all three, so like there's it's gonna sound weird. There's really nothing special about the original animated one. It's just the story brought to life for that era, yeah. right? And I guess you could say maybe the animation, right? Yeah. But then when you get to Jim Carrey. It's the costumes and the prosthetics. Exactly. And the set designs and all that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, in essence, it's still the exact same story. Yeah. Nothing's changed. For me, with the Benedict Cumberbatch version, what I love about that were the the freaking gadgets that he made to take all the... Dude, I was like, how badass would it be to have... When he, had, when he pulled out those two candy canes and he was like shooting out the nets. Yeah. And he was grabbing them. And then he was like flying. I was like, dude, that's freaking badass. Yeah. The, like, I was like, I, to me, that's that's what I really, it was funny, obviously. The story was, you know, the same. Um, but to me, what I loved about that one, I was like, oh, shit, man, they gave this dude gadgets. Like, right? You know, like, right. Because, like, in the, in the original, like, yeah, he, like, sucked stuff up and he slithered and did all this other stuff. But in this one, it's like, no, nah, we're not going to have him do that. Like, he's going to be fucking smart. You'd be and high, high tech yeah. and shit like that. <laughs> and, and of course, you have the famous Grinch song that, you know, you can't... Oh, yeah. Just... You're a mean one. Yeah. And then, and then I, think, I think to me the best version is Jim Carrey's. Um, although the new one's pretty good, too. I'm not a really big fan of... Uh, that was Pharrell, wasn't it? Pharrell. And, no. Did for, um, Pharrell the, the new one? The last I one? think he produced it, but I don't think he's in it. It's... Uh, what's his name? Oh, great. The dude that had the blonde hair in the old 80s... What's his name? Rapper. He used to have the show on MTV with the skateboards and they do pranks and shit. Oh, oh, fuck. Don't. Ah, oh, shit. I can't even think of it. He calls himself a goblin. What's his name? Um. Do you know who I'm talking about? I do. I'm trying to, I can't think of his fucking name at all. Like, I can't think what the hell, um. With the skate, uh. It wasn't the uh, his uh, big um, Tyler the Creator. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh it's god, kind of tongue tied on that one. But yeah, it, it's Tyler the Creator that sings this one. I think, and I think Migos. I think it's Tyler the Creator and Migos. Okay. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't doubt. I wouldn't doubt that one. I wouldn't know it. But yeah, <laughs> when you said Tyler, I, I remember that one. Yeah. But yeah, no, that, it's funny because, like I said, it's just, it's that one for me. What sticks out the most is like the fact that they made him, they made him Iron Man. They made Doctor Strange Iron Man. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Awesome. All right, so now we're down to our number one. Do, you, do we just want to say it on threes together? Yeah, we're gonna like, say it. Okay. One, two, three. Die, Die hard. hard. Okay. Die Hard. Die Hard. Yeah. And if anybody says it's not a Christmas movie, you're fucking wrong. That's for damn sure. <laughs> exactly, you're you're fucking wrong. Uh, no, I mean, number one, it's it's a movie that works that shouldn't. Did you ever watch yes. the Netflix uh, little documentary series that films the 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 films that made us? Uh uh Okay, so there's so like they there's different movies that they do. Okay. And one of them is. About Die Hard. Okay. Okay. So, Die Hard is actually based off of a book, but in the book, John McClane's character is like an old man, like in his seventy. Okay. Right. So, like there was talks of like uh, Robert Redford, Warren Beatty, like all these, and again, they weren't like old, like in their seventies per yeah, se, yeah. but they were like older cats, right? Yeah, yeah. To to play the role, 
And so, anyways, it got passed around a lot. And then they like they somebody brought up Bruce Willis, and like the studio was just like, "No, man, we're talking about the moonlighting guy." Like, you know what, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? The comedian so, from yeah. moonlighting. So it really took a big risk, and I think I mean, it's obviously what propelled Bruce Willis's of career. Course. But um, so there's that little piece, and then that's funny is okay. So at the end, you know, when uh, when Alan Rickman's character, rest in peace, mm -hmm. uh, when he falls from the building. So his facial expression is 100% genuine because when they were filming it, you know, he's in a harness or whatever, right? Yeah. And he was supposed to have a countdown. The release was like five, four, three, two, one, and let him go. They let right? him go before the countdown. Okay. No, they didn't even fucking count this motherfucker down, dude. They just said, click. And like that expression uh -huh. is him of total fucking fear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, so, that's crazy. It, yeah. And then they actually blew up. A piece of that building, yeah, the Nakatomi building, yeah, yeah in LA, yeah. Uh, so that I remember. And they actually, hearing, they, hearing when that. they did it, the fucking cops showed up and all kind of like, like for real in real life, and they're like, "What the fuck?" And they're like, "No, dude, we're filming a movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we got permits for that." <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a Christmas movie. It takes place during Christmas. Uh, you know, good guy, it, a reluctant good guy was yeah. there really to save his marriage in some sort of way. Pretty much. What? Happy doing Christmas. Um, you Christmas have, party. Christmas, during, Christmas, during your, Christmas party. Yep. You have your boy in the limousine um, uh, with the goddamn well, bear, the gift. Uh -huh. The beginning of the movie is playing um, uh, from Run DMC. Oh, Christmas, Christmas in, in Hollis. Uh, 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 Christmas in, in Hollis. In Hollis. That's a... What <laughs> fucking more? <laughs> like what fucking more do you need? Like the man is pretty much barefooted, stepping on goddamn uh, glass. glass, whatever. Like ornaments and shit there, decorations and all kind of stuff. Yeah, just yippee Yeah, yeah, fuckers, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's a uh, to me, it's my number one Christmas movie. We watch it every year. Uh, Same thing here too. What's funny is last year. Andrea had never seen it before. Really? Shout out to my wife again. But yeah, she had never seen it before, so she watched it and she's like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, okay. Like, the movie's awesome. She's like, no, no, it's good. And I'm like, no, 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 do we need to see this again? Because you're just like, <laughs> no, 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 it's good. Like, you're not as excited as I am about right. it, right? You know what and, I mean? And but, actually, uh, what's funny about you saying that, uh, so me and Christina, we went on a date night a couple weeks ago to this Christmas bar in downtown Austin. They convert. Into like an actual like went to Wonderland type thing, presents mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. Christmas trees, all kind of shit. Miracle on Fifth Street, right? Yes. Yeah. And so in the back of the bar, on uh, the uh, on the screen, they show that heart. Like you know, it's a Christmas. Movie. It's a fucking Christmas, fucking Christmas movie. Like, <laughs> and also too, I actually have a shirt. I don't know if you saw it or uh, if you knew I had it, and I still have it. It's some. It's somewhere, but I know I have it, and uh, I could wear it. I have a guy from GameStop a long time ago. It's the um, 1985 uh, Christmas at, at the Nakatoya Plaza uh, uh, shirt. That's funny. Yeah, so, the Funko Pop one. No, it's not Funko. Oh, no, uh, 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 no, it was a Funko Pop T-shirt. No, Pop and T. That was a few years ago. No, this one. It's the white shirt. It has uh, 1985 Nakatoya Plaza uh, in, in uh, I think in red. It has the logo from the from the actual movie in green in the building and thing in red and that kind of deal. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like a like, like little I guess like a shirt souvenir, whatever that kind yeah. of deal. So yeah, I got okay. that shirt. Shit. Yeah. I, actually, I need I need to find something to wear it this weekend and that kind of deal. So like yeah, I was there. Yeah. Shit. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Our top three Christmas movies of all time. Uh, as far as Christmas specials, shit, Christmas specials, shit. So for me, the Grinch. Yep. Fucking um, Charlie Brown Christmas mm -hmm. special. Uh, we're definitely ready those reindeer. Yeah. But if you're gonna watch them, if you're gonna watch that Christmas that Christmas special. You also have to listen to the DMX version of We're Definitely Ready Those Reindeer. <laughs> that that is probably the fucking ride carry. That's the best Christmas song. Ooh. Is the DMX version. Oh, I could have. Yeah. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Don't get me wrong. I mean, everyone knows All I Want for Christmas, right? 
But for, for me, we're talking about Christmas songs. Like, oh, uh, 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 even though it's like two, two minute and a half, two minutes. Arr, arr. <laughs> I, oh my god and it's uh it's, there's a um there's a reel on instagram of the audio of that and i'm like that shit is just so fucking good that shit that shit is just so fucking good <laughs> uh, <laughs> think, come on food off the red nose reindeer <laughs> it's murder <laughs> uh, fucking, uh, is john fucking, ruling that one too no nah, it's, it's, it's just him because okay. he, he was um it was him i guess doing an interview behind the scenes and oh my god okay yeah yeah now i know what you're talking about because first i was like what the fuck are you talking about yeah it was, okay it was, now but i know was, what you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. And, and she asked him something and he's like and he, he started he just started i guess not freestyle he said you know presser no dixon no comic no cupid what of all oh my god come on you know what you're talking about the red nose reindeer it was just <laughs> it goes on. i fucking love it and actually they actually play that on um xm radio on um uh, Channel Link 44 at the hip hop station. Yeah. They actually play that every once in a while. I know they're going to play it here soon, but I fucking love that. That shit is great. Oh, my fucking, God. Oh, that my God. Hilarious. I fucking love that version. Oh, man. Okay. Christmas specials. Uh, yeah. All of the originals, right? Like Santa Claus is coming to town. Rudolph the Red Nose. Frosty the Snowman. Ooh. Fucking. Um, damn. Um, Grandma got ran, ran, ran over by a reindeer. Oh, yeah. Grandma got run over that by was, a reindeer. That yeah. was actually pretty good. That. That's actually very obscure. Not a lot of people know about that. Yes, yes. Th that was more recent. Maybe like the last maybe 10 to 15 years. Yeah, yeah. That kind of deal. Maybe um, 20. Yeah, Charlie yeah. Brown Christmas. Um, I'm interested to get your thoughts because we haven't talked about this. But uh, the Guardians Christmas special. I enjoyed it. I, I, I agree. I, yes, cliche. I wish there was a, dan a dance off, but I get it. You know, that's kind of... I think everybody wanted a dance off between yeah. Peter and Kevin Baker, but you know something? Because isn't Kevin Bacon? Uh, he actually has a band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that was pretty cool for him to actually do a little song in there. But I enjoyed it. The whole Drax part, um, going to going to uh, Hollywood Boulevard and everybody taking pictures with them. Like who the like these are fucking fucking street characters. <laughs> and fucking Drax sees um, the dude from GoBots. Yeah, <laughs> he's like. He sounds like, you killed my family, like, what? Like, what? He's like, oh, that shit was funny as hell. And then Mantis fucking just getting paid, taking everybody's fucking money and shit. Oh, dude. Like, damn, bitch. Like, like, like okay. Yeah, and uh, I enjoyed it as well, too. I think, uh, uh, you know, Penelope loved it. Uh, shout out to my daughter. Uh, you know, she's six, so of course she's going to like it, right? I, I would have, and I know it centered more on, like, Drax and... Um, and uh, Mantis, but I thought we would have gotten more Rocket. I thought we would have gotten more buff teenage Groot. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to know, and, and like I know, I know, like now Cosmo is now part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, but how? Yes, you know, what's the backstory? Yeah, what's the backstory? I want to know now since spoiler alert, Rocket has, um, uh. The Winter Soldier's arm. Does he not have an arm no more? The Winter, the Winter Soldier. Mm. Like you know, since now yeah. he has his arm, so the next time you see the Winter Soldier, uh, which could be, which probably will be in Thunderbolts, is he gonna be armless? Or, or is that gonna be like an after credit scene of like how he got the arm? Or exactly <laughs> yeah, like yeah. like uh, th that because we that, know this takes place after Endgame, but like. At what point in time after Endgame? Exactly, it's open to interpretation. So, right. so this 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 could easily take place after Thunderbolts. Mm -hmm. So, in credit scene, yes, you see Nebula go meet up with uh, the Winter Soldier, <laughs> and it's right there. All of a sudden, she just goes, she just like does something to take his arm and that kind of deal. Who knows? That, that, that could be. To me, I would think it's funny of like, let's just say like. For instance, like maybe like Bucky's taking a shower and his arm is like on the counter and she like pops it in. And she's oh, like, that would be fucking and hilarious! She just takes it and runs away. <laughs> oh, that, that would be that would be that would be hilarious. Like he's doing something. Like he could be in a hotel in his hotel room or camping out or whatever. You know, being secretive. He takes it off to kind of like just whatever because you know he's taken it off many times before. Mm -hmm. Like even Wakanda, he had, he took it off whatever. He takes it off, puts it down, 
to maybe like just kind of like just like okay, yeah, relax. whatever, relax. All of a sudden, you see Neville in the, in the background. Get this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch is cussed off. Like that'll be, oh, that'll be hilarious. Yeah, that would oh, be. Oh, that'd be so funny. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it too. I'm like, like I said, and we talked about it earlier before we started the show, but. I, I have a love hate relationship with James Gunn, and I think he he needs to. I think he needs to not write what he's directing, especially when it comes to, you know, the Marvel movies and Marvel franchises. Because Guardians of the Galaxy is probably one of Marvel's best movies out of all their slates, right? For sure, top five for me, as far as Marvel movies go. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of iffy. We're not going to talk about DC news until next show, but I'm I'm a little worried about about what's going to happen with the DCU. Well, we'll, we'll know. We'll see we'll, what happens. We'll, you'll see happen. So yeah. Okay. Um. So Christmas specials. Yeah. Um. All right, man. I guess we're at the end. Yeah, Let's talk to... about some toys. <laughs> yeah, toys. That's right, all people. Right. But just not toys for kids. Toys you know, for adults. Adult. That's right. And not sexual toys either. That's right. Fuck these kids. <laughs> uh, this was uh, forwarded to me by my wife. Uh, NBC News: Adults who buy toys for themselves are responsible for a fourth of all toy sales annually and are the biggest driver of growth throughout the industry. We did it, people. We did it. We we fucking put a dent in toy sales. <laughs> Wasn't even trying to. We just fucking did it just cause. Can you imagine a fourth, dude? The thirty-three percent. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. No, that's a third. It's third yeah, it's tw- yeah, 24%. Yeah. 24%. 25%. 25%, yeah. That's, that's of, of all toy sales. Of all toy sales this year. are adults. Yeah. So you got to stop and think about, like, what does that encompass? Like, and what's the reason behind that? Uh, reading the article, they specifically called out the fact that, like, kids, gen, uh, millennial, gen Z, or whatever they're called now, um, this generation, they don't, they're not playing with toys. You know, you got Gen X, and then you got, I guess millennials are 90s kids, right? Well, well, we're Gen X. Yeah, we're, we're Gen X. I'm on a cutoff, but. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm part of Gen X. So then Gen Z, millennials will be, it's, it's the 2000s. Okay, so what are the 90s? That would be probably Gen Z. Gen Okay. I think it'll be Gen Z. Okay. Because if it's Gen X, Gen Z, the millennials. Well, you know, even kids in the '90s were playing with toys, right? Of course. You didn't have a really a uh, like an electronic boom of like video games until like the mid to late '90s, and then you had iPads and, and smartphones and all this other stuff. So I could understand that, but yeah, no, no, no. Like when I was little, like I was outside playing oh, with yeah. toys, like and friends would you know come over and bring their toys and like. Ooh, you got that one, and then I'd be like, "Mom, mom, mom, please, 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 can I get this toy?" The blah 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 blah. It's only nine ninety. Like I remember, the, oh, so, yeah. to this day, my mom looks at me and goes, "It's only nine ninety nine." That's funny. You know. So, but yeah, man. I mean, you, so you stop and think about those, and then you have like the anniversary toys. Like you're big into to, into Masters of the Universe, mm-hmm. but like they have like the fortieth anniversary figures, right? Yeah. And then they're relaunching the original figures, of course. With the original packaging, all this other stuff. You got not, and then you got the Ninja Turtles and all this other stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, like the adults now. And honestly, are, I are kind. I think to me, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, oh, you, but you, like you. I think they're re, they're trying to recapture their childhood. Yes. So so it, it, what I think it is because people ask me about you no, know, if you guys see on my channel. I bought a shitload of toys, some Funko Pops, action figures. I show them all off on Instagram and that kind of deal. I think for me, or for a lot of people, what it is, I think it's honestly, is that I couldn't have it as a kid. Uh-huh. I'm buying that shit now. now. That's all it is. Yep. That's, it's pretty much, hey, my parents couldn't afford it at the time as a kid, or I missed out, it didn't, or it didn't come out, or just some form of fashion of that. It's the point where, hey, I could afford it. You know, oh shit, I had it as a kid, it brings back nostalgia. Oh shit, I remember this one. Uh, this, this was one I was missing as a kid. You're gonna get it now, all of a sudden. Oh shit, I need to, fu- uh, the fucking um, playset came out for it too. I had this as a kid too. It's, it's a, it, I think it's a melting pot of all that. Yeah. I think 
it was a perfect storm, which is crazy when you come to toy sales for adults. I think it was a perfect storm from a nostalgia to pretty much income. It's a like, hey, yeah. you know, just like I can buy this. Yeah, yeah, like you know, because <laughs> you know, it's, it's I think it's all that all yeah. mixed in in that yeah. kind of deal. One hundred percent, because I know like in the like the mid to late eighties for myself, like I know like. For instance, like Thundercats was like my, my big thing, right? Like and I had cats. and I had like the figures, but I never got the Thunder Tank. I never got the you, the you, lair. You could buy it now though for, for five what five six hundred dollars? Yeah, now? yeah. NECA could keep that. I'll wait for them to relaunch the. <laughs> like five hundred bucks is a little steep for a for a fifty dollar toy. I'm willing to. But spend that on, bitch but is bad. Is, that that is bitch bad. is huge it's too. Bad. It's, it's bad. bad. It's bad. Yeah. Bad. So, but. But to your point, like, I can get that now. Yeah. It's like, like in the 90s when I was a little bit older, it's like with Ninja Turtles, right? Like, um, and then too, also kind of going back, and I was reading this in the article, right? So you had the late 80s where toys were a little bit more expensive than they were like in the 90s. Because mm -hmm. like, I remember like, you know, it was like the, the, the Ninja Turtles and then like in the mid 90s, you know, the it was like the Power Rangers and then like the, the Marvel figures and things like that that I that I had and like you know like <laughs> the saying like it's only nine ninety nine, right? Yeah. But like um, now it used to be nineteen ninety nine. Now you got inflation, so it's like twenty four ninety nine or twenty nine ninety nine. And so but again it's still it's like I can afford it, I can get it now, right? Yeah. And have it. And and what's crazy is like when it comes to the actual toys themselves, which I don't know at what point this happened, I I don't know. When did Hot Wheels become such a hot item again? Oh, I know. Like at one point, Hot Wheels was hot, of course, whatever back in the eighties. Before I, that, before the, before yeah, that, before that, like but, 60s and seventies. Yeah, it was hot. it was hot, but then I don't if I remember. Not to people, people I knew the nineties buying Hot Wheels. Yeah, it wasn't until maybe the last five years Hot Wheels just got got like popular again. Like, what the fuck happened? Yeah, I've seen people like, like posting Wheels. videos like going to like Dollar Tree looking for like, like Hot like Hot oh, Wheels. Man, this is a collector. This one's a collector. And I'm like, dude, it's like like when did Hot Wheels become just a, a yeah. hot? Like, what the hell happened with that situation? I never had really Hot Wheels mm -hmm. when I was a kid, but I, I, had, I had a, a I had a, a not a lot. I, I may have one or two, like like one offs kind of deal. Maybe like stocking stuffers or just like yeah. little one offs. That was. Um, I remember having Night Rider, which that's not a Hot Wheel, but I remember I had Hot Rider Night Rider as a Hot Wheel kit. Mm -hmm. Had kit and. I had the fucking uh, 18 van. Oh, yeah. Hot Wheel. Which I fucking love that fucking Hot Wheel. If they brought that shit back, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. I had that. What else did I have? I think I had a lot of a lot of 80s TV vehicles mm -hmm. kind of deal. I had a lot of those, but like I just... Think the only Hot Wheel that I ever had, it was it was a three-pack that I got for Christmas as a stocking stuffer. And it was the, it was the Batman 89 set. It okay. was it was the Batmobile, the Joker like big ass long body sedan, uh -huh. and then the the van, the Joker van. Okay. It was those three. Um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't really play with like cars like that. I had a buddy that had like the epic tracks, and that was cool. But like I was like, see, okay, I had. But then I was like, ah, I don't know if I want that in my room. Okay. <laughs> I had the tracks. And how I know I remember how the fucking tracks could because I got my ass beat by a track. <laughs> That's how I know I have those. You so I've been doing something. Huh? I, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I just remember getting my ass whipped with a fucking orange Hot Wheel track. Damn. Yeah, because I, I I had I think I had the um, just the plain the one with the, just the one that went in the oval. Yeah. Hot Wheel track. I, I had think like if no, I got my ass whipped by a Hot Wheel track, I would never want a Hot Wheel again. <laughs> That's like post traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah. Hey man, what are you coming in for, man? I got PTSD from one getting my ass whooped from my hot wheel track. Hot wheel track. <laughs> the motherfuckers ain't no joke. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's hard ass plastic, man. Fuck yeah. yeah this is back in the in the mid late eighties, uh -huh. early nineties. That was that asbestos plastic too. Oh shit! That, that shit there was no joke. So, but, but yeah, just hot wheels. I don't yeah. know what the hell happened. And then, 
but so, so you couple that right so we're talking about like nostalgia and then you have like the new stuff so you have like the Funkos you have the sodas you have um, whatever the hip hop artist ones are and the sports ones oh, shit and, imagine that you, you now have Ameri- American Girl oh American yeah American oh god dude American Girl Barbie actually I think I saw a report Barbie actually the um, they say Barbie sales have gone down a lot in the last couple of years. Like you don't see too many uh, little girls uh, buy Barbies that much you, anymore. You want to know why? Why? Okay, for example, my daughter she uh-huh. loves Barbies, right? And the reason why their toy sales are down is because two years ago there was like five or six fucking Barbie movies that came out on Netflix, like boom, 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 and each one of those movies had associated toys with that launch, mm. okay? Don't ask well, how I know this, but I know this, right? So there was like um, Chelsea's greatest birthday bash ever, and it was this launch, right? Mm-hmm. And then it was Barbie's Adventure of a Lifetime, and then it was these toys associated, and then it was Big City Big Dreams, where they introduced like um, like Barbie, and she went to like uh, the school in New York, and so like there was that launch. So it's like, but like now, like, you know, Penelope was asking me, she's like, Daddy, when is another Barbie movie coming out? I was like, I don't know. And then they just launched one, but no toys for it. Yeah, I don't, I, I, so, don't, I don't know if you talking about you know, it. Or, or maybe they're saving their cards for the Barbie movie. I don't know. I don't know. Just, but, but yeah, no, you got, and then you got Monster High, you got Rainbow High, and I think really for for kids that now, have now been, Legos. Now you got Legos for adults. Yeah, you got Legos for adults. But no, but to me, I think the number one toy that's really taken off for like kids are like these blinds, right? The blind bags, like the, the five bl- surprise minis, yeah. or like the ones where like you got to spray with the bottle to break the sand up to get, you know, like yeah. Penelope loves all those things, right? Like you, she could get the same freaking toy every time, but she doesn't care. It's like the experience of like yeah, going yeah. through it. So, but so. yeah, that's just you know, you know, toys. We won. We got one. That's right, baby. <laughs> So, oh man! Well, this, this, I think that's gonna wrap up this wrap episode. Up, baby. We're gonna wrap it up. Uh, listen, happy holidays to everyone out there that's listening and watching. Uh, happy holidays to you and your family. That's right. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah, Kwanzaa. Feliz Navidad. Uh, okay, bro. So, Falasowitz, so, fl- fl- whatever. I don't know. Yeah, Just, yeah. Any little holidays. Happy so, whatever you want to celebrate. Before we go, okay. What's up? So I learned. So I'm. Tr- so I'm trying to be a good Latino okay. and learn something new about the Latino culture, other cultures that are like um, uh, traditions or whatever. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> oh shit! Oh boy. Here okay. We go. So, in if I'm not mistaken, and again, I'm not making fun of this. It's just to me, it's funny. Okay, I'm not making fun. Mm-hmm. It's just funny. Okay, so in I'm one. I'm like ninety percent sure it's like in Cuban culture, right? Okay. So for Christmas, they 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 burn a log, and they, <laughs> and they call it caca tío. Okay. Okay. Caca meaning for poop, right? Yeah. And then tío like an uncle, right? Okay. So so what they do is they turn this log, right? So you see the round side. And they make a face on it. Okay. The deal, right? And then they they do something to it to when it burns, uh-huh. the ash and stuff come out the back. Really? Okay. So they when they burn it, then they take sticks and the kids take turns hitting it going, Caca deal. Really? <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, I shit. had never heard of that before. And when I saw it, I was like, that's fucking funny. That is funny. Like, wow. I learned something new. And again, that was from one source. It could not, it maybe is not the 100% tradition. And again, I'm not trying to offend anybody. That's just, to me, that shit is fucking that, funny. That is, yeah, when you think about it. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. Okay. But, uh, yeah. But again, happy <laughs> holidays to you guys. We appreciate you. Thank you for the love and support. Look, we're trying to get to 60 subscribers. So if you can help us out with that, share, like, subscribe, share with your friends. We're going to post this on all of our uh, platforms. I'm back on on Facebook. I was doing a Facebook ban, but you know what? To grow the channel, uh, I I opened back up. I'm going to do some side shows uh, in the New Year's. I'm going to be reviewing some comic books that I pick up. Um, 
So look out for that. And uh, the Mark show is going strong. He's got his little, uh, you know, action figures and toys. Toys, and, toys, yeah. toys. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be more on, uh, God, what's the name of this thing? I really like it. Uh, it's a social media platform. Not Hive. No, it's a, a letterbox. Oh, so oh letterbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah where you can put your movies oh, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah, review. Yeah. So I'll yeah. be doing that as well too. So, uh, but yeah, definitely take a uh, look out for us on these platforms. Again, we're trying to grow. And as always, thank you guys. We love you, and we out. Merry Christmas, bitches. Peace. Bye. Bye.